But I think we've all seen in recent decades, and certainly since the time of Vernon Turner, what he was worried about has come to pass. Secularism is the, the zeitgeist of the age, and increasingly people say there is no place in the public square for anything that's of God, any type of spiritual or religious discussion whatsoever. In, in that regard, there must be a place where the gospel can be heard as part of the mix, the free-to-air mix of radio in Australia. One of the things that drove our founder, the Reverend Vernon Turner, was a desire to keep the gospel on radio so that it could be heard by all people, wherever they were. I always felt that radio was a marvellous means of reaching people. That's the first thing. And then add to that the gospel, the Christian message. Marvellous means, and I've always had that feeling. Uh, Vernon was a man who loved to tinker with radios. Uh, he was an older man than me, but he could understand uh, the, the days, war years plus, where you had wireless sets and those sorts of bits of technology. I remember making a, a microphone and a pickup and things when I was very young. I made a, a microphone out of a Beecham's Pills box when I was about seven. <laughs> Filled it up with carbon and uh, carbon granules and a bit of mica and a couple of bits of wire. They say radio is a disease that you just can't get rid of. You know, it gets into your blood. It's, it's, there's no cure for radio, and many of us who've worked in the field know that to be true. For Vernon Turner, it was a divine compulsion. Every aspect of it, from the technology, the wires, making his own microphones, for goodness sake. So he was fascinated with them, but that wasn't his main objective. His main objective was to go on air and engage with the listener, one at a time, with the Christian message. After the war, Vernon arose and he knew that technology was going to be necessary and that was radio uh, to bring the, the mission of God, the ministry that Jesus set apart for the church to the people of Australia. I think it was Lex, his assistant for many years, who told me this, that on one occasion they walked into the, the studio, which was a fairly beat up old room, there was nothing special about it, and he said to, to Lex, Lex, one day we're going to have a radio station here. And she said, oh, that's nice. I must just say, how on earth can you get a radio station out of all this? A, a one beat up sort of studio, second, third rate equipment, uh, money lacking. What, what, how can we ever do that? Back in the 50s or even earlier, we had the feeling, you know, that uh, this wouldn't last. The commercial stations would gradually drop religious broadcasting, and that happened. And uh, way back in the in the early days, well, 1950 something, I think we we applied for a license for Sydney. Now that wasn't granted, of course. Vernon applied for radio licenses from the 1950s right through to the 1970s, and uh, was either rejected or there was no opportunity for a license to be given out. CBA, the Christian Broadcasting Association, has a very long history, 32 years before the licence was even granted. CBA was a massive producer of Christian content for this country that was being played on commercial radio stations up and down the length and breadth of Australia. If Jesus is the key to where it's at, and if the world's best-selling but unfortunately most ornamental book really has the answer to a relationship with Jesus, shouldn't we at least see what it's got to say? But of course the problem comes up. Dangerous Mission, a true story of faith. Tense drama of the South American jungle and the dreaded... Well, hi there, Ray Myers here. Welcome to the final Cavalcade 68. We have some rather interesting people for you tonight. We'll hear from the Reverend Gordon... Morning Parliament. Devotions. Do you know that over a period of some 1,600 years, a number of different people wrote the Bible under the direction of God's Holy Spirit? It's a book with a beginning, a progression. This is station 4BC Brisbane. We cross now to the Sunshine Hour. again from the capital of sunny Queensland, this is Vernon Turner presenting a half hour of hymns you love in the Sunshine Hour. On this program you will hear... Ruth Starting as a singer with the Sunshine Hour was, well, was an incredible experience really. I mean, uh, uh, Vernon would get in touch with me and he'd say, will you come and sing uh, for the Sunshine Hour, which was live. 
I loved the name for a start, Sunshine, because it was not long after the Second World War. People were poor, people were hurting, and so the name Sunshine just grabbed them. And people received joy and uh, encouragement, and it met a great need. I think our peak production was about 800 programs a week, supplying over 100 commercial stations. We gave these out free. Now, producing those that quantity of Christian programs, they were all sizes and shapes of programs, and then distributing them free of charge was quite a big effort and took a lot of money. We had to pay for it. We offered them free to the commercial stations. Although the stations that were taking them were not Christian, they were asking for more, basically because it did a, a commercial necessity. It filled a gap. But in actual fact, it was, as far as he was concerned, it was fulfilling God's purpose. It took Vernon Turner 23 years of trying, of applying, uh, to have a licence granted for 2CBA. In the 1970s, the government decided on a totally new sector within broadcasting, which was called community broadcasting. And it gave Vernon the opportunity to apply for a licence to serve the Christian community of Sydney. And so they did that. The licence was granted in 1978, the first Christian radio station licensed in Australia. And we went to air in the March of 1979. Stereo 103. 2CBA FM. Good morning. This is Vernon Turner welcoming you to Sydney's third FM broadcasting station, Stereo 103 2CBA FM. Today, March the 5th, 1979, is the realisation of a 23-year-old dream, and we're all pretty excited about it. We commence transmission after a great deal of hard work and a lot of faith, and uh, I hope and I know that you'll enjoy the programmes we have to offer. May I take this opportunity? When community broadcasting was first licensed by the government, they had special interest licenses, and it was a special interest religious license that Vernon Turner was granted for 2CBA FM. Vernon's intention, of course, was not just to appeal to Christians with the radio station. He wanted to reach all men wherever they were with the gospel message, and so he adopted what was a really unusual format at the time. Today we call it an integrated format, mixed format. And at the time, it was a real innovation. Christian radio around the world was primarily focused on discipleship. Vernon, however, wanted to focus not just on looking after Christians with Christian content, the idea being that you want familiar content to the unchurched, as well as the Christian content that will share the gospel. I could see the genius behind that, because Australia, in many ways, had become a secular country. As Roger Clemson, the former chairman, used to say, putting the, uh, the bait on the, on the hook as you go fishing. Drop it in and the people will come up and nibble the, the bait. And I think that was just an amazing uh, way of approaching uh, Christian outreach. We certainly hear testimonies of people who've come to faith, who had no faith, who've come to faith as, as a result of listening to a radio station that they found comfortable because it had familiar material and then it exposed them to Christian content. I get a bit tearful. I was, um, I'd just come off shift, morning shift, and uh, a lass came into the foyer of 103 at um, Seven Hills uh, with a burqa, a whole bit. And she broke down in front of, um, front of us and said, I've been listening to a station and I want to give my life to Christ. That was beautiful. So I think yeah, that epitomizes what we're about. Change of life remarkable change of life. Hope reminds me to look for God in everyday moments. Every day that I listen to hope, it reminds me to look for Jesus. Hope definitely helped me find my feet again. It helped me find my relationship with God again. So I started listening to hope all the time, in the car, at home, always. And the Lord spoke to me so clearly, words of encouragement, words of hope. This is real life and, and there you can have hope in God. And just hold on, just hold on. Sometimes when I turn on the radio, the right song will play at the right time, the right message, the right words. God is using hope as an instrument to send his message to me that I am not alone in this journey. We're taking the gospel to where people are. 
We're doing what Vernon always wanted to do, to make sure the gospel was available to every man wherever they were. The gospel, the mission of the gospel, the presentation of Jesus as who he really is, is so much what Australia needs. God is reaching people as individuals and families together. This work will not finish because that's where God's passion is, is love for people. Christian media speaks to the heart and the soul of people. It has an, a sense of eternity about it. Organisations like Hope in Sydney and other stations have a very, very valuable role to maintain family values, uh, honest conversations and new ideas. Our mission in 2019 is no different to what it was when Vernon first started the ministry. And that is built on a foundation of prayer to take the gospel message into the broader community, to take the gospel to where people live on a daily basis. Today, our purpose is still quite specifically to engage people, Christians and non-Christians alike, with a real experience of God's love so that they can become more like Christ and the world can become more like His kingdom. 